Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with an update in the AI infrastructure space. A new record debt deal is coming together to fund Oracle's project Stargate infrastructure. Bloomberg reports a consortium of banks are putting together a $38 billion debt deal, which will be the largest financing deal to date for AI infra. The deal is split into two tranches, $23.25 billion associated with the project in Texas and a $14.75 billion package that will fund a data center in Wisconsin. Both data centers are being developed by Vantage data centers and will be operated by Oracle to provide compute for OpenAI. The institutions underwriting the deal include a laundry list of the world's largest banks, including JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Society General, Mitsubishi, UFJ. The banks will sell the debt onto high net worth clients, private credit firms, and pension funds. Now, right now, data center debt is red hot, so there will likely be no shortage of buyers to snatch up the record-breaking deal. Earlier this month, Meta closed a $27 billion deal with PIMCO as the major buyer, and that debt surged once it started trading on public markets, making PIMCO $2 billion in paper gains. The deal also gives us some insight into how data center financing is being structured. Both tranches have four-year maturities with two one-year extension options. Sources said they're priced at 2.5 percentage points above the benchmark, so likely between 6.5 and 7% interest rates. Now, there are a lot of interpretations of this. Of course, the people who want to see an AI bubble say, OMG, look at the size of that debt deal. Debt is coming in. That must mean it's bad. There's a real tyranny of big numbers for those folks. On the other hand, are people who realize that at least right now, there is enormous demand in the markets for this sort of debt. Private credit just has a voracious appetite for this. And so to them, in short, this is fine. Endgame Macro notes that it is part and parcel of a larger paradigm shift. They write, This is about the new arms race in AI infrastructure and who can lock in the physical and financial foundation of that ecosystem first. Data centers have become the modern versions of oil fields. Whoever controls the power, cooling, and fiber capacities controls the economy that runs on them. Oracle's $38 billion debt sale is an attempt to seize that ground before it gets fully priced out. They continue Oracle is using leverage to buy its way to the front of the line, converting future AI workloads into guaranteed bond financeable cash flows. It's turning the data center business into a quasi-utility model with stable, contracted revenue in exchange for enormous upfront capex. They also point out something else important. There's a deeper macro signal here, too. While the government is issuing hundreds of billions in treasuries, private credit markets are happily absorbing corporate infrastructure debt like this. That tells you investors are betting that AI-driven demand will hold up even if the broader economy slows. That the cash flows from training and hosting large models are the new safe assets. Ultimately, that means they write, the deal represents two overlapping forces, the financialization of compute and the monopolization of digital energy. Oracle is trying to own the pipes and power sources that the next economy will run through. And by funding it with record debt, it's making a massive bet that AI demand will become the backbone of global economic growth itself. Next up, staying in the realm of infrastructure, Anthropic and Google have announced a massive new AI compute deal. Anthropic will expand their use of Google Cloud servers, including up to a million of Google's TPUs. The deal is expected to be worth tens of billions of dollars and add over a gigawatt of capacity for Anthropic next year. The news is in some ways a coming out party for Google's range of TPU chips, which are one of the more credible competitors for NVIDIA's industry-leading GPUs. TPUs, or tensor processing units, are special purpose chips that can only be used to run AI models and other machine learning applications. In contrast, GPUs are much more general purpose, so have some future-proofing if new incompatible architecture arises. Google is currently ramping up production for their 7th generation TPU, however until recently, the chips were largely for internal use only. They have been available to rent through Google Cloud, but this is the first major deal to establish a dedicated TPU cluster for an outside client. Theoretically, the benefits of a TPU over a GPU are speed and cost. The special purpose design is more efficient, but until now, Google has been a generation or two behind NVIDIA, meaning the trade-offs didn't stack up in practice. With the new 7th generation Ironwood chip, that gap appears to be closing. The specs suggest they'll be on par or even better than NVIDIA's latest generation Blackwell chips on performance, speed, and cost, but of course we'll actually have to see how that holds up in the real world. In their announcement, Anthropic was careful to note their continued commitment to Amazon as their primary training partner and cloud provider. They also reconfirmed their work on Project Rainier, a multi-facility compute cluster that will contain hundreds of thousands of chips. Analysts believe this could be the first tentative step for Google to market their chips for sale. With Bloomberg Intelligence writing, Google's deal with Anthropic suggests more commercialization of the former's TPU beyond Google Cloud to other neoclouds. Shea Balour writes, Google just locked Anthropic into the largest TPU expansion ever, which ties a $7 billion revenue run rate directly into Google Cloud and adds a gigawatt of compute capacity by 2026. The takeaway is Google is turning TPUs into the profit engine of its AI business. 
Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella has published his annual shareholder letter. And in case you were wondering, AI remains at the very center of the company's vision of the future. Nadella wrote, Imagine a world where every person can get help from a researcher, a coder, or an analyst on demand. Not just information, but deep contextual expertise paired with action. Or where every organization, no matter its size or sector, can reinvent employee experiences, reimagine customer engagement, reshape business processes, and bend the curve on innovation for their people, businesses, and industries. This is the new frontier and how we will unlock the next level of productivity and growth for the world. The only reason that this is notable is that there are a number of analysts who are trying to basically suggest that Microsoft is nudging away from AI, given that they've been less enthusiastic about the infrastructure build-out than some of their competitors. And to the extent that you think that that's the case, this letter should disavow you of that notion. Microsoft very clearly sees its future as AI, period, full stop. Lastly today, a really cool example of why vibe coding is not just for prototypes. The Kingdom of Jordan is partnering with Replit on an AI learning assistant. A pilot of the assistant known as Siraj is already live and has conducted more than 600,000 interactions with more than 100,000 students and teachers. Once the pilot is completed, the plan is to make the assistant available to all 1.6 million students and 90,000 teachers in Jordan's public schools. Essentially, this is a tool to enable self-directed learning as well as a quick reference guide for teachers. Siraj interacts with an Arabic language interface, requires no technical background to use, and functions like a conversational search engine. What's really cool about this, though, and why it's worth shouting out here, is that the pilot version of this was put together in less than a month by a single person, Amr Abulaila, who is a member of the National Council for Future Technology. Abulaila said, Building a project of this scale from scratch would have taken months of development. Using Replit enabled us to prototype and deploy the learning assistant in a fraction of the time, effectively transforming vision into reality. So no, as it turns out, vibe coding is not just some fly-by-night trend. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines edition. Next up, the main episode.